Happy Tuesday, everyone. First, we have to acknowledge, acknowledge the great news. It's great news for you and me and all of America, frankly. Yes, Larry Kudlow's back. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think we could do it, but there you are. It took months of hard work, lots of hot tubbing, but he's here. I'm not proud of some of the things I had to do in that tub, Larry. <laughs> But I'll do whatever it takes. Also, side note, Al-Qaeda leader Al-Zawari was killed. Yeah. You're sick. He was just 71 years young. His remains will be cremated and spread over his already cremated remains. And to think he just finished paying off his women's studies degree. We went to his family for comment. That's terrible. Show the guy some respect. Let's go to his real family. You know, that's even worse. You know how those guys hate pork? <laughs> it's the other white meat. They despise. <laughs> no wonder he became a terrorist. At least he didn't get into stripping, because once the robe comes off, it's just ankle socks. Oh. Don't ask me how I know. So when I first heard the news, I have to say I was a little confused. And no, that's not a quote from the president. First, I had not heard that name in a while, like Chris Wallace. <laughs> but it was. But it was a name I literally heard or wrote about every day for a period of years after 9-11. But for some reason, we stopped hearing about him and also stopped talking much about Islamic terror, especially after Trump got in. Remember ISIS and those videos? We should. That was bad. So when the news broke yesterday during the five, it was as if my terror muscles were flabby. I hadn't used them in so long. Unlike my actual quads that won a blue ribbon at that wine festival. Thanks, Larry, for taking me. But the terror muscles, they were rusty. I imagine it's how the view panelists feel about their brains. But I realized I needed to get back in shape quick. The killing is a helpful reminder that terror, like smallpox and Chris Cuomo, never really goes away. <laughs> Especially when 9-11 plotters have assistance, like the Taliban. I had no idea he was in Afghanistan hanging with the Taliban, and not in a good way at the end of a rope. But turns out he was staying at a house apparently belonging to Afghan Deputy Interior Minister and New York Times contributor Sirajuddin Haqqani. And it's not a bad place to die. You know, it's amazing what you can get from Airbnb. <laughs> Although I don't think the owner will be too happy about the condition the guest left the place in. That cleaning bill is going to suck. How do you get bone matter out of the Formica? <laughs> oh, I know. Too soon, right? <laughs> But take a look. The place had a balcony, it had great views, and now, thanks to a Hellfire missile, it's got an open-air kitchen. <laughs> but, but... With 72 virgins cooking in it. <laughs> yeah, huh? You'll wish you died and gone to heaven. But let's show a picture of the dead guy. Yep, that's definitely Alza Wari. Or as Merrick Garland calls him, a white supremacist. <laughs> if you'll notice, his red hat is under the turban. <laughs> of course, this raises some questions. Is Afghanistan going back to being a base of operations of terrorists? Seems so. Which means like J-Lo and Ben Affleck, Al-Qaeda and the Taliban are reunited. <laughs> it feels so bad. I'm just a little nervous we whack this guy. And meanwhile, thanks to the Joe's open borders policy, there have been confirmed reports of anywhere from 50 to 100 people on the terror watch list unaccounted for in our country right now. But still, this is good news that we killed him because it means we can pick off the people we need to pick off without waging full-blown wars. And any day when a terrorist dies is a good day in my book. Of course, when you kill a terrorist, another one takes its place. You know, in a way, it's just like canceled late-night talk shows. <laughs> Terrible. One flops, and there are three worse ones waiting in the wings. You didn't think I could make that analogy, did you? But I did, and that's why I get paid the big bucks. Ugh. 
Those are some big bucks. <laughs> Don't be so sad. I'll be home soon, fellas. Just save some acorns and apples for me. Now, some people don't want to credit Biden, since after all, he said al-Qaeda was no threat in Afghanistan. What interest do we have in Afghanistan at this point with al-Qaeda gone? We went to Afghanistan for the express purpose of getting rid of al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, as well as, as well as getting Osama bin Laden. Mm. And we did. Mm. So like my aunt, who eats plastic army men, Biden's claims have not aged well. <laughs> it appears Al Qaeda was there and were active and out in the open like a cold sore on a spring breaker's lip. <laughs> I hope it was a cold sore, not monkeypox. By the way, what was I doing with her? And I think we can be skeptical about how much Biden really knew about any of this, since, like a rare mushroom, he's kept in the dark on everything. He's basically living in a nonstop blackout. Like son, like father. For him, every day. <laughs> how does that get applause? For him, every day starts out as a blank slate, and someone comes in and adds the daily specials. I guess what I'm trying to say is his brains are cream spinach and corn chowder. <laughs> and remember, this guy did take a victory lap after we got Bin Laden, after saying he was against taking him out. That's like me taking credit for Taylor Swift's success when I had nothing to do with it. I mean, true, we dated and everything. <laughs> and her biggest hit, Shake It Off, was about me stubbing my toe on her bedpost. <laughs> but unlike her, I'll leave the dirty laundry to Kat's office. <laughs> but still, when bad things happen under a president, they get the blame. And when good things happen under a president, they get the credit. The problem with Joe, however, is he won't take the responsibility for the disasters. So it's hard for me to give him a slap on the back over this. But what the hell? I will anyone, anyway. Nice one, Joe. But really, it's our American forces who get the accolades. It's the players who win the World Series, not the manager, especially one who can't find his way out of the locker room. So job well done, guys and gals. You sent a hellish monster straight to hell in tiny little packages. I wish it could have been sooner, but I say that about everything, including 2024. <laughs> Yes! He puts the fine in finance. Host of Cudlow on Fox Business, Sexy Larry Cudlow. She's one badass broad caster. Host of Sunny's Corner on Sirius XM, Patriot, Sunny Johnson. She found her cat in a dumpster, or vice versa. Fox News contributor, Cat Tiff. Yeah. And his jumping jacks require special clearance from the FAA. My massive sidekick in the NWA World Television Champion, Tyrus. Yeah. Larry, this is good news, but do you care to expand on your own perspective on this? I thought you did a very good job. Thank you. Really, I thought you did a very good job. And we should never forget 9-11 mm -hmm. and how bad that was. And Zawahiri was a key planner. So you're dead right on all counts. And I'm glad they got him. Mm -hmm. um, no hell is good enough for that son of a bitch. Right. Why would you say that? Mm -hmm. uh, tip, tip of the hat to Joe Biden. Especially tip of the hat to the intelligence services who really engineered this. Mm -hmm. And I'll just, having said that, I'll issue a warning because yeah. you mentioned it. The fact is Taliban is harboring al-Qaeda's or Haqqani's, okay? The second fact is we still have not made good on our Afghanistan promises to help all those American friends and allies who are still there, stuck in that despotic country. Mm -hmm. And actually something Mike Pompeo said to me on our show today, American taxpayers should not give one nickel to this Taliban regime. They are terrorists, they hate America, they hate freedom, they hate all our values. So, good, so, so, as I hear he's gone, but we've got to keep our guard up all the time because they're coming after us. You know, um, that leads me to a, probably a, an obvious follow-up question. How did Mike Pompeo lose all that weight? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I hate to be a spokesperson, but I think he ate less. Uh, all right. <laughs> I hear that works. 
I hear that works. Wasn't that good? I just came up with that. I that thought was, that was excellent. Was that very, very cool? You're doing good, kid. I was doing good. <laughs> I was completely unprepared. It wasn't in the notes. You know? Damn. Sonny, always great to see you. <laughs> What's your take on all of this? Um, I feel bad laughing at some of your jokes in the beginning. <laughs> so, um, but I guess appropriate for Greg. Uh, yes. I just want to put that out there. Um, one of the things that I think is most dangerous about Zawahiri dying is if you listen to what everyone says, they say that the, the main thing about him was he didn't have the cult of personality that Bin Laden had. Right. So that's what scares me more than anything, that the next one that comes after him is going to not only have the murderous ideology, but is also going to have the personality to push it. And I say I think that that might be a reason why we haven't heard so much about it in the last couple of years, but if they get the right face and the right voice out there to be in leadership of what they're doing, then I think we're really going to, you know, hear a lot more coming out of Afghanistan. But if you think about it in terms of our politicians here pushed us into globalism, thinking like this was going to be um, the answer to what ails us here in America. And part of that was the war on terror. And now what we're seeing is the East isn't participating in our globalism. Africa isn't participating in our globalism. South America isn't participating in our globalism. So it's not globalism. It's just Westernism. Yeah. And a shout out to Hotep Jesus for saying it on my show. But um, that's where we are now, yeah. is, is that we are coming to a realization that as a nation, we have been pushed into this idea of globalization. And it's like, we're the only kid at the birthday party. Like, yes. nobody else I is, know that is showing up. Yeah. And it's going to be very sad when we go to open the presents and, and we realize exactly what's there in terms of lost treasure, in terms of lost uh, lives, in terms of lost stature Don't across the world. Yeah, that's where we are. And they want to call us isolationists for pointing that out. No, y'all did a very good job of isolating us on your own. We had nothing to do with that. That's a brilliant point, the point especially the point about the... The absence, the absence of Al Zahari being due to his personality. Kat, uh, you're an expert at getting bombed. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you'll never get tired of this. I know, I know. Um, oh, it gets worse as the show goes on, Kat. I just want to warn you. A little yeah. trigger warning there. Well, as a libertarian, are you okay with this? Oh, no, I, I, I am certainly not. <laughs> the terrorists should live. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like, what kind of question is that? <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm gonna blow your mind here. I think the terrorists bad. 9-11 <laughs> was also bad. Good job. Yeah, you tell me you did 9-11, I'm gonna say, no, sir, that was not good. <laughs> good job. <laughs> well, how much do you expect me to some kind of nuanced take on this? <laughs> well, no, I was just thinking if you had, like, a little, you know, some kind of, like, uh, complexity having to do with, you know, missiles and things. I don't know what you libertarians think. Well, we think we, we are not pro-terrorists. Right, that's good. <laughs> all right, well, you learned something new about me today. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrus, all right, wrap it up for us with your thoughtful... Uh, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be the bad guy here. I guess I'll be the, the cat in this situation. Uh, my, I'm concerned about the point of this. Mm -hmm. You spit in the face of all the allies we had in Afghanistan. You left them hanging. Mm -hmm. You empowered the bad guys. You, China's punking us, mm -hmm. Russia's punking us, and you go and kill the quiet guy that everyone forgot about who was powerless. <laughs> so now you just inspired everyone who needed an excuse mm -hmm. for martyrdom. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's the problem with this administration. We can't even, Nancy Pelosi has to fly to Taiwan, like, I'm going, <laughs> and our administration's like, I, don't, I probably wouldn't go, I don't know. <laughs> China's bigger than us. And that's our administration. If our previous administration, if someone would have made a threat like that to Pelosi, they'd have been like, for every plane I see, there'll be 500 of ours and a bomb. You know, mm -hmm. it would have been a threat. No one would talk to the United States that way. Afghanistan wouldn't think about the things that we've done. But we continue to make these horrible mistakes, these gaffes. Mm -hmm. So you, you pissed it down your leg in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and now you went and you gave them a martyr. Mm -hmm. So I'm not as thrilled about it. I'm glad he's dead, mm -hmm. but I, I just think the timing was pathetic, and it's not going to take our minds off inflation what horrible what you're doing in our education with our police. None, nothing that's going to work. No smoke screen is going to work. So you killed a guy who was ineffective at the top. Yeah. So you've inspired a bunch of new guys, and we have an open border. Yeah. And yeah, well played. The statistics, like, 
statistically. statistically speaking, a lot of the times when you take someone out some, like that, the lower level people who replace them are even more ruthless but the timing. than the person that was yeah. taken out. We well, haven't it's also one deal yet. That's, I mean, to Sonny's point, that like if they get a charismatic leader again, then all bets are off. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.